My name is Raquel Ramati. I'm an architect and urban designer in New York City. I think skyscrapers are extremely important these days, particularly these days, because we build a lot of single family and small buildings throughout the country, in many countries. As a result, people live very far away from the center city where they work, and as a, a result, we take a lot of the green spaces, and we also create a lot of pollution because we have more cars. When you build a skyscraper that may have 10,000 people in it when you work, or 100 families, instead of 100 single family homes that take acres and acres of land far away, you basically place them in the same area. A skyscraper has a variety of uses. It could be a residential skyscraper, it could be an office building, it could be a hotel. So therefore the needs of the use inside determine a lot the shape of the building. So a residential building, for example, may have terraces. An office building needs a certain floor for people to work in. Also, don't forget that because we're going maybe 50 or 60 or 70 floors high, we need a major core in the center because we have more elevators if we go 60 stories than if we go four stories. So inside every one of these skyscrapers, maybe one third of the space is the core where there's a stair in case there's a fire or in case you want to go from one floor to another. Building a building, particularly a skyscraper, which has a lot of a team of people, it's not just the architect, it's the architect, it's the engineer. So the team is very large and in a way it's like making a movie. First of all, the big challenge is that when I build a skyscraper, I build a building for maybe next, in the next hundred years. I have a responsibility for the city and for the citizens because it's there. It's not like a hula hop that is going to disappear. Tomorrow, today it's fashionable, tomorrow it isn't. It's going to stay there. So it has an impact on the environment and on the community that they're building, whether it's an office area or whether it's a residential area. That's the big challenge. So you want to make sure that you build one within the context. That means that your building is not isolated from its environment that if you build on Fifth Avenue, it relates to Fifth Avenue. It's not standing with open space around it and a lot of parking spaces. Of course, the physical aspects are a big challenge for an architect. There are areas where earthquakes are very prevalent, like in San Francisco, for example where you must build buildings that can stand in an earthquake. I was there in the latest earthquake about a month ago. I wasn't in a skyscraper, I was in Sonoma, which was right near the earthquake. Our building, which was designed by a very well-known architect, Robert Stern, which is a very well-known architect, the whole building shook. Now some pieces of glass were broken, but the building stood up because it was built to extend earthquakes. And another thing that's very important is winds. I mean, you see an 80-story building, you have a wind problem. How do you deal with the wind? Some buildings in New York City, for example, which is not that windy, has buildings that move one meter each side when the wind is there. Because the skyscrapers, they, if they are one next to another, they, they change the wind patterns. So most architects will go to a, to a laboratory that specializes in wind tunnels. They will make a model of the building in its context and they will study how to build the building structurally 
So the wind is not uh, impacting the building. So in a new building, for example, an eight-story residential building in New York designed by Rafael Vignoli, in between every 10 floors, there's a floor that's empty, which allows the wind to go through the building so the building doesn't move. The end of the skyscraper is telling us that there is a special building over there from everywhere. So the top of the building should express the end of the building. Look at skyscrapers that you may see, that your teacher may show you. Maybe the Empire State Building, maybe the Chrysler Building, maybe the Sears Building and think about the symbol of what you want to actually tell about your building. So think about creative ideas that I may not have thought about, but you have an imagination and you should be able to do it. So good luck. Bravo.